particular behavior, particularly as it was reflected in, in U.S. federal and state public policy uh, as it pertains to immigrants and repatriation, is an old problem. Okay? It's an old problem. And uh, the, 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 the essentials are that every population of color, including American Indians, have been impacted by it. The second point is that, so what? What should we do about it? What can we do about it? Okay? And what Representative Ellison said is very true. We have to focus on the immediate, at this point in time, which is the Liberian TPS status. The second is we have to develop another movement, a movement that incorporates all of the individuals who are affected by this kind of policy. When I talk about it being an old issue, you can go back to the very post-Civil War days and see the, the, the impact. This is when they were talking about getting rid of African slaves, freeing them and sending them back to Africa. Uh, at the same time, however, uh, right after the uh, war uh, for, with Mexico uh, in the 1840s, uh, there was a significant repatriation of Chicano Latinos, okay? Moving them out of those states that were acquired by the United States, uh, New Mexico, Arizona, Texas, uh, part of Texas, Colorado, Nevada, etc. okay? <clears throat> but the Chicanos were even affected even to a greater extent right during the Depression. Over 500,000 Chicano Latinos were, quote unquote, repatriated to Mexico as a result of public policy and public values, okay? I.e. fear and hatred and animosity and mean-spirited, okay? You also have to realize that at this particular time in the 1840s and 1850s, okay, you had the Chinese Exclusionary Act. All right. So what I'm trying to point out essentially is that we have been affected for a long time. They have played us, however. Okay? Divide and conquer. <coughs> and what I'm saying essentially is, is that this, the TPS issue, the issue of immigration, not only affects Liberians, it affects the Chicano Latinos, it affects Asian Pacific Islanders, it affects a whole range of people that have to get together if we're going to have any kind of meaningful solution to this issue. Thank you very much, sir. The Liberian community is deeply grateful uh, to Congressman Ellison the Minnesota Advocates, the Urban League, the Jewish Community Association, Council on Black Minnesotans, and all of those organizations and individuals, churches, that have been with us in the struggle for humanity. It's uh, very important to note that we commit ourselves to developing those relationships further. Uh, we made a lot of strides, but there's still a long way to go. Adding to what the congressman was speaking earlier as it relates to the tensions and the issue of the comprehensive immigration versus the Liberian issue, I'd like to restate something you said in our meeting on Friday, which is that Liberians have a clock ticking over their head. We have a clock ticking over our head. In March of two, 2009, if nothing's done, uh, legal immigrants are going to be turned into illegal immigrants. And that's something we have to work hard to ensure that doesn't happen. Uh, a play like uh, Tap the Leopard, I think, is a very valuable resource in uh, cautionizing Americans about the commonality of our history. And it's we're very grateful to you know the author of that play and the actors for their commitment to our cause. I'd like to add that uh, we need to expand the cautionization effort beyond that uh, to discuss. 
the historical uh, alliances over time, as the congressman stated, this was not just a partnership that happened at the birth of Liberia and stopped there. Liberians have been consistent, reliable friends of this country to the point that we risk our own security. Uh, we weren't depending on anything to declare war on the Germans, but that was our moral responsibility <laughs> to this country. And uh, throughout history, we've been on the side of human rights and freedom. Uh, Liberians stood by the South African blacks in their struggle. Uh, we cast a tie-breaking vote in 1948 to create the State of Israel. We were at the forefront of helping other African countries achieve their independence. And now today we've reached a point where due to a series of internal and external factors, our own situation is one of crisis. And the congressman spoke of the West African equation. In the 1980s, West Africa was one of the most stable places on, on the face of this earth. Liberia became unstable, and as a result of that, Sierra Leone became unstable, Guinea became unstable, the Ivory Coast became unstable, and the instability threatens to spread. Uh, stability is returning uh, with Liberia now becoming stable, and unless that stability in Liberia is sustained, uh, we risk having that uh, instability reemerge. And uh, as much as the discussions have gone back and forth, and with people admitting or denying evidence, there's a strong uh, correlation between instability in Liberia, extended to Sierra Leone, and Osama bin Laden, and Al-Qaeda being able to exploit that insecurity to create uh, underground finance using diamonds from Sierra Leone to finance their activities. So that tells you how close this matter is to home. If you think it's 4,000 miles away across the ocean, we live in a globally connected village. And the last thing I'll speak of is the congressman had also talked about, as we speak to different congressmen and women, everyone has a different issue that touches their hearts, that motivates them. Uh, for some people, it's the question of humanity and human dignity. For others, it's a question of political loyalty. For others, it's a moral question. And on the moral question, what's important to note is that we in Liberia got into this situation as a result of a geopolitical fight between <laughs> Libya and the United States. And so Gaddafi decided to pick on Liberia because that was the easiest target that he could hit to hit the United States. And so we're in this situation. Uh, had it not been for that, our internal factors were not sufficient to put Liberia in this situation because it took the arms and the training and the logistical support from Muammar Gaddafi to throw Liberia into crisis. And the only reason it did it was the United States rebuffed its attempts to gain supremacy in the Middle East. So uh, we ask for your support, for us to all redouble our efforts. Minnesota has been playing a leading role in this effort. We've committed to make sure that Liberian communities across this country through the Union of Liberian Associations in the Americas uh, takes the lead and will take the lead in duplicating and replicating the Minnesota formula in other states. And we will all need to be part of that to help to get the other states to learn from our experience in terms of getting the support necessary to get this bill through. And if we can get it through this year, so much greater. Uh, Congressman, we will be in, uh, in D.C. before June. Thank you very much.